Let's hear from the coach. This is Behind the Beard with Bobby Smirniotis, Forge FC head coach and sporting director. Now, the woman who takes us there, here's Mackenzie Barwell on the Forge Audio Network. Episode number two of Behind the Beard. I'm joined by head coach and sporting director, Coach Bobby. Thank you for joining me as always. Today, I wanted to dive into your goals for Forge FC this season. You don't necessarily coach in a conventional way in the sense that wins are considered the epitome of success. And while that's a factor, how do you view success and how does that sort of manifest in the team's performance? Yeah, I think everyone wants to uh, wants to win and uh, and wants to win trophies and championships. But we always have to remember in sport, there's there's one of them, and there's many teams. You know, I want that to be a byproduct of our process. I want that to be a byproduct of uh, of the things we're trying to do on the pitch, uh, of the culture we create off the pitch. And I think if you do all of those things right, then you give yourself a very good chance of winning, uh, because it's always easy to say we want to win a trophy, uh, but there's eight other coaches or seven other coaches in this league and all the coaches around the world are, are saying the same thing. You know, I want that to be a byproduct of, of the style of play that we have here, the identity we have as a team. And I think that's been our biggest success up to date. When things aren't necessarily going your way and maybe the team goes through a couple losses or doesn't get as many wins as, as you guys plan to, how do you keep yourself and the team in line with those core principles and values that you hold? The biggest thing is belief. If, if you believe in them and if you really believe in those core principles, if you believe in the process of, of how you want to play, um, you know that that's your guiding light. Um, and that happened to us in, in 2022 uh, when we were on a fantastic streak. I think it was six games in a row that we had won. And for the first time in our history, we went five games without a win. Uh, and this, you know, kind of uh, hit the players a little bit as a, as a, as a rough patch, uh, not knowing how to deal with it and how we dealt with it as a staff is, you know, we stayed on the same path. You know, all of our success has come um, through sticking to our identity. And even in the tough times, you have to stick through your identity to make sure that your players also understand that, that as a coach, you believe in them and you also believe in the process. And I think that's the biggest thing that gets you through. And in 2022, it ended up pretty well at the end of the year. Yeah, for sure. And I think what's interesting about your coaching style as well is that no matter you know, the opponent, you're still sticking to that style of play rooted in ball possession. Where and when did you kind of develop that philosophy? Did you have one mentor or a team that you kind of look up to? Where did that come from? Yeah, I think early on in my uh, in my start as a, as a coach, uh, in, I was probably early to mid-20s, uh, I spent a lot of time around the uh, Ajax of Amsterdam. Mm-hmm. Um, Ajax and the, and the school of Ajax, as they call it, through from the academy to the first team, is deeply rooted in uh, in having a specific identity on how they play from from top to bottom and from bottom to top, uh, possession, entertaining, based football, and you know watching that and spending time through their U nines, their first team, watching all of them play and, and just playing the the game in such a beautiful manner. It's always something that I I wanted to see as I grew as a coach. And I think that's where I probably had the biggest influence, you know, in, in, in Dutch football, uh, specifically Ajax, learning a lot from there, taking a lot from there, and then implementing it in my own way as I kept on developing as a coach uh, year upon year. And uh, obviously as a professional coach now, the last five years is is taking a lot of those thoughts. And, uh, and every year you always try and add to it, but at the core of its principle is, is how you entertain and how you make this such an... Um, an enjoyable process for the players. Mm-hmm. Uh, as I've said in the past, uh, mm-hmm. you know, the players are, are a bunch of kids out there playing something that they, they've dreamed of doing as professionals, but in the end, um, they're having fun. Uh, if we can keep that in line with, you know, making sure that there's discipline, but there's also a good component of enjoying themselves, I think uh, that helps not only in the results, but that helps every day become more enjoyable as we're out here, you know, six days a week. Mm -hmm. You spoke about this team in Amsterdam. Were you living there at one point or was this something you were able to learn over a broadcast? No, no, I spent a lot of time in uh, in Amsterdam and and following Ajax uh, as a renowned uh, football philosophy. back starting in in 2004 so for a good part of you know i'd say about six or seven years i'd spent uh you know periods of the year uh, three weeks to a month at a time um at their facility and just following all their teams and i thought that was a great way to be uh, educated as a young coach 
and a great place to be gaining uh, education and insight, not only just watching, but sitting down with, with all the coaches yeah. from the first team coaches all the way down, like I said, to the U9 coaches. A lot of them uh, became my personal friends and uh, you know, were able to uh, you know, have very good conversations about the game and, and really uh, enlighten myself on the, on a football philosophy, which, you know, if you go back many years ago, didn't really exist here in Canada. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. I was watching a CPL video on YouTube the other day, and I'm going to quote it exactly because they talked about some of your players feeling like they took a master's degree in football graduating with a patience in possession (laughs) what do you think that you can say that you've learned from the players you've coached over the past few years with Ford FC I think the biggest thing is uh, is is players want to enjoy each and every day of them being out here Um, you know it's a job and we're all paid but uh, in the end uh, we can't look at it as a job we have to look at it as what it is and it's it's fantastic entertainment and it's a it's an opportunity for us to come out onto the field as coaches and mostly as the players, an ability to express themselves. Mm-hmm. And if you give the players the freedom of expression within a structured environment, uh, you'll always get the best out of them. Uh, and that's at least part of uh, part of my philosophy in, uh, in working uh, with the guys. And, you know, it's been with players who grew up through the Sigma Academy and maybe had the philosophy growing up, but with a lot of the players who have joined Forge, who have come from external environments and, and quickly adapted. And that's the one thing you learn. It's when, when you're talking about a certain style of play, uh, when the players have certain characteristics, as it's important for us to scout and bring them in, uh, I think they adapt very quickly to this style of game. When you, when you talk about looking for certain characteristics in scouting players, what would those be? Yeah, first and foremost, uh, the players have to be comfortable on the ball. Uh-huh. Um, you know, if uh, a player says uh, the patient's in possession, a lot of that has to do with their passing and receiving abilities, but mostly in, the, in how players handle the ball. Passing, receiving, you know, and, and it's simple things, but it's, uh, it's not easy for, for a lot of players, um, you know, right off the bat. So it's specific towards positions and, and what we're looking for, but we just want players who are comfortable on the ball. If they're comfortable on the ball, um, we can help them with the rest. Yeah. We'll shift gears a little bit here. We talked about how the CONCACAF rankings recently came out, and I spoke about that in Forge Daily today, actually. Um, What are your thoughts on that, and how do you think that the league can sort of climb the ladder in the next upcoming years? I think first and foremost, we're relatively, uh, um, not relatively, we are a new league. Mm -hmm. We're entering our our fifth year. Uh, I mean, when you look at this, I think uh, we're doing a great job. And usually know the caliber of your league with how you've competed outside of your league. Mm -hmm. Um, And that's through CONCACAF competitions, um, where as a league, we've done predominantly well. Um, For us as Forge, we've competed four years in CONCACAF competitions between CONCACAF League and uh, CONCACAF Champions League, Pacific uh, FC as well for for one season. And I think through those competitions, uh, we did ourselves uh, very well um, for us in one of the years going on to to the semifinals so that shows that there's very quick growth in the, in the league there's quality in the league so i think that will only grow over time so i think it's it's normal when we're going into our fifth year where we are but i think you know the ambition of being a top three league that's there i don't know if that happens in three five ten years but uh, i believe it's going to happen uh, mm-hmm. for the infrastructure that we have um the quality of uh, of stadiums the quality of players uh, quality of play in our league I think it's it's only going to rise. And once you do that, you're going to get yourself uh, a little bit higher up that list. That will wrap up today's conversation with Coach Bobby Smirniotis. We will talk to you at the same time next week. This has been Behind the Beard with Mackenzie Barwell and Bobby Smirniotis. If you like what you heard, please like, follow, subscribe, comment, and share.